Live. So, kia ora everyone. We are live on YouTube and I will um, really encourage everyone who's live right now to um, go into our chat box and really let us know where, who you are and where you're um, connecting in from today. So, get in that chat box and let us know. So, I'll hand over to the team at, in, at Atumai. No matter what ma o le lani, o le vi inga fa netza ngan ma fa manu ilo wa fiona. Awa o e tsa tsa ina mai le so fua ma le ola ola fa nau ile le fo i vai mo leas. O le matza o tsa lo ye e fa tsa si mai lo matza o fa mo e mo e fo e mai le o e manatu. Ha o matza e tu fa e ini a wa le fa le le ye o matza a a nanga mo matza a tu. E ala foe i le nei au au nanga. Fa atasi mai ma futa mai. Dingi mai o fa manianga i lo fa nau. O le tsalo le na e ala tu swafa Yesu. Amen. So, um, no mai, hare mai, kia ora and welcome everyone to our live webinar. And it is an absolute pleasure for us to introduce today the team at Atu Mai. We are in this virtual realm and as always we like to acknowledge the Indigenous lands that we all stand on and whether they're here in Aotearoa or from wherever else you might be joining us today. We have a fantastic presentation I'm really excited about today's presentation. It is the fantastic team from Atumai who are part of LeVar and they're going to tell, tell us and talk to us about their key learnings, their journey in developing a a prevention program and a prevention initiative, sorry, not program, a national prevention strategy for Pacifica young people. So I warmly want to welcome Elizabeth, Nale and Mirafora to um, this Tuanas webinar space. So without further ado, over to you. Mama Miriam. Mama. Thank you, Miriam, for that warm welcome. Um, Tālo for lava, everybody, and welcome to Atumai's webinar, Preventing Violence for Pacifica Young People. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Mutti and I'm the Senior Manager for um, Atumai. I'm also a clinical psychologist and before coming over to Atumai in January this year, I was working in Counties Manukau for Bakator and it was actually a Pacifica service for young people and their families. And I worked with a lot of young people that have actually experienced sexual harm. Before that, I spent some time at correction. So I'm Apakasi, I'm half Samoan, half Palangi. My dad hails from Sa'anapu, in Opolo, and my mum descends from England. Awesome. My name is Nale Dafa, and I'm the researcher for the Atumai team. Uh, I come from a large town of us, and my um, and Kolomapua, and my mum comes from Kolomapamatapo. And yeah, my value, Pacifica value that I is Tawhiwa and Whakapapa, so respect and then honouring the space that relates. Mm -hmm. And I forgot my Pacifica value, which is family, or Ainga. So family is everything to me. I have two beautiful daughters and a very wonderful partner. My name is Ailu Potea Taituunga, Nua Forum Ta'afa Komiti. I am Samoan, yes, from the beautiful islands of Samoa, the heart of Polynesia. And my father comes from the villages of Ufilufi and Sasatele Falealili. My mother comes from the beautiful village of Falelima in Savai. My work here, my role here at Leva is Senior Project Coordinator, and the value that I live by the most is Tautua, service, which is giving to others. Okay. So in terms of the overview of our webinar today, um, I'm going to talk a bit about Leva and the Atumai program, in particular the youth um, part of it. Then I'll hand it over to the lovely Mirafora, who will talk about cultural competency, and then over to Nale, who will talk about our evaluation framework. Okay. So, LeVar is a national Pacifica NGO, 
And our purpose is really to support Pacific families and communities to unleash their full potential. Um, we support this by carefully designing and developing evidence-based tools, information, knowledge and support services for the best possible health and wellbeing outcomes. And we all do, and we do this all while recalling our um, Pacifica values. And we have a thing at, at Lavar where it's all about traditional values, contemporary execution. We also um, believe that the solutions um, lie within our communities. And we work alongside sports clubs, education centres, church, and, and other relevant groups that have large um, population of Pacifica people. So we, we just really want to ensure that the right knowledge, skills, and information is reaching the right people at the right time. Okay, so we do this by firstly equipping communities. So equipping communities by providing education, resources, training, and support to Pacifica communities that enhance wellbeing. We also support the workforce by growing the capacity and capability of the Pacifica workforce enhancing the cultural competency of services to ensure that our Pacific people are getting the best service and also through mobilizing leadership. So we're supporting others, um, Pacifica leaders kind of coming through the ranks and also working in collaboration with our partners. And we have four major portfolios. So that's mental, mental health and addiction, suicide prevention, disability support and coordination, and more recently, our violence prevention, which we'll be talking about today. So a big thing at LeVar is about collaboration. So not just collaborating, but actually moving into actually doing things, working together as a partnership and acting together. For an example, just this year alone, we worked with the NRL and partnered with their welfare and education managers to actually deliver our mental wealth through the Auckland Rugby League clubs. And we're hopefully looking at actually doing some of our Atumai stuff with them as well. We also have a good partnership with Home Care Medical and they provide a lot of our clinical support so after workshops, when people are doing online learning tools, if they need actually further support, they can actually go to online chats, they can do text, and they can do um, calls or through to trained counsellors. So that leads us to the Ashimai um, program. So this is New Zealand's first national violence prevention program, which actually focuses on Pacifica young people with an emphasis on sexual violence. It targets young people 16 to 24 years of age, but it's also has a life course approach, which we'll talk about. So I came here in January um, this year, and before I came, there was actually a lot of work done over 18 months, but probably even two years of research looking at how we're going to um, design this prevention program. These included things like literature reviews, um, we engaged over 50 stakeholder organisations from Pacifica young people, Pacifica community groups, NGOs, people working in the field. Because what we know is that a lot of the research and literature, there's a lot, there's a lot of scarcity or paucity of, of research around Pacifica. So we actually, actually had to go out into the community and, and investigate as well. We also looked at government data sets to see what the current state of play is for Pacifica young people. We had two standout discoveries. So we know that Pacifica people actually have some different risk and protective factors for violence in the general population of New Zealand. For example, we know that there is shame. There is a lot of shame that is experienced by young people and people in general that have experienced sexual harm. But with Pacifica, the this, this shame um, tends to be more intensified in the context of a culture of silence. We also know that, you know, cultural identity is a strong protective factor for Pacific young people. And when they're actually disconnected, that can also be a risk factor. Breakdowns in intergenerational communication. While we know that communication with families is key to kind of um, young people's well-being, with Pacific people, there's more dis disconnect. So, you know, in terms of parents and grandparents and, and young people, there's more of a cultural divide, which actually met, um, causes further breakdowns in that intergenerational communication. And we know if we support that, that can be a really big protective factor for our young people seeking help when they need it. And the other thing that we're kind of looking at is cultural distortions. Not everyone likes that term because it implies that, you know, our culture, our culture is distorted. That, that's not what we're kind of getting at. What we're saying is that actually our true culture, our values, our Pacific values have been distorted and at times have even been used to justify the use of violence. 
to work. A big part of our thing is actually um, challenging those cultural distortions and getting Pacifica young people to live by our, our Pacifica values in, a true, in, in the truer form. So in terms of state of play for Pacifica young people, we are two times more likely to experience sexual abuse or um, coercion, three times more likely to be exposed to family violence. And we all know that a lot of sexual violence is not reported to the police, and this is the same for Pacifica young people. Three quarters are not reported to police. Um, Pacifica children are more likely, two times more likely to be physically punished compared to NZ Pākehā. We are overrepresented in the number of home-related assault claims, and our, to our total cost of assault claims is disproportionately higher too. And when we actually do receive help and get claims, the cost per claim is higher, suggesting that we're seeking help maybe at a later stage, um, and also that maybe our issues are also more severe. And we tend to access support at lower rates. Okay, so the Atu Mai program is a primary prevention program. And we, the, the, the main focus of that program is in primary prevention. So actually looking at targeting and supporting young people before violence actually occurs. The Atu Mai is actually based on the Cook Island proverb, Aroha atu itu aroha mai. So love flowing outwards and love flowing inward. So this proverb was actually chosen by Pacifica young people. And really it's based on Pacifica values of reciprocity and love. And like I said, this program is all about getting and supporting young people to live more by their values. So there are some kind of key enablers in our program design that actually are supporting us to affect change. So firstly, it is a systems approach, um, a socio-ecological approach, and it's a multi-level intervention to kind of um, target those different levels to address the root cause, the risk factors, and protective factors for violence for Pacifica young people. We, um, there's a lot of psychologists here now at LeVar, and we are really focused on behaviour change. So we're making sure that, you know, we're providing psychoeducation, and more importantly, um, we're incorporating motivational um, interviewing techniques. We're incorporating tools so that Pacifica young people, you know, see the importance of changing, but then also we're increasing their self-efficacy so that they have the tools to be able to change as well. We are youth-centred, like I said, 16 to 24 years of age, but it is a life course approach and we have parenting programs in development as well. And like all of, of LaVar's programs, we are based on the three Cs. That's making sure that we are clinically safe, we are culturally sensitive, and we incorporate cultural values, and also that we are in the community. Because as I said, we do believe that um, the solutions lie within the community. And we're wanting to upscale um, and doing this so by providing digital solutions. So all of our Atumai content will eventually be available online, and we have got some stuff online already. So we, we are a small team, and, and here at LeVar, we do like to say that we um, punch above our weight. I think in total, there's about 20 of us. There's five of us here on the Atu Mai team. And, you know, and, to, and to get the scale that we actually need, but then also to increase engagement, um, we, we take a community education approach. So that means um, training people, um, Pacific leaders in the community to actually deliver program content. So this could be people like school guidance counsellors, it could be church, church youth leaders, social workers, people within the context that are actually at the cold front working with our Pacifica young people. And we hope to have more of these trainings early in 2020. So as mentioned, it is based on a systems framework. So we are um, all about building relationships and connections and collaboration with other agencies. We are looking at partnerships to kind of work together to be able to support the community effectively. All of our programs, yes, are based on clinical um, and cultural values and research, and there's a lot of co-design as well. In terms of scale, we're doing that by our community education approach and also taking things online, and we're providing support to current providers through providing cultural competency. So in terms of our areas of focus, 
So if we look at um, the young person, there, there are three main areas that we're looking at focusing on, and that's strengthening self-worth through culture. So that's getting young people to know the benefits of actually being Pacifica and being, and, and being diverse. Um, and then it's also getting them to explore their Pacifica values and actually making a cultural um, plan, a plan to actually live more by those values. The next one is enhancing respectful relationships. And that's similar, some of that content is similar to what mainstream would provide, like consent and upstander and having respect for relationships. But I suppose the difference that we provide is actually embedding our values in that and starting off with actually getting young people to understand about what Leva is and having respect for relationships generally, you know, with your peers, with your family, before moving into intimate partner relationships. So... We know that um, in Pacifica, talking about these types of things can be taboo. It can be sensitive. So we need to make sure that actually we ease into it, providing a lot of kind of support and um, for young people before going straight into intimate partner relationships and, and consent. The next one that we're doing is um, intergenerational communication, and that's supporting young people to be able to have empathy for the older generations, but also the tools to be able to ask and seek support um, from the elders when needed and to also be able to have better relationships. Um, within the parenting modules, we'll actually do um, the um, we'll do the similar thing for parents so that they can actually have more empathy for young people and have the tools to better engage the young people more. So in terms of family, the strengthening family relationship skills. So we're going to be providing um, parenting support for um, um, parents with um, children, but then also adolescents. We're also going to have a module um, just for dads, um, and then a module on engaging, um, oh, sorry, parenting in the first thousand days. And then if you move over to the community side, we have the cultural competency stuff that Fora will talk about, um, increasing access to support for psychoeducation and awareness building, and engaging Pacifica communities to be a part of that change. Okay. So as I mentioned, we do a lot of co-design. So all of our modules go through co-design. We like to co-design, you know, at the conceptual phase, um, pre-online phase, and then post-online. And we like to think of our um, all of our content as being iterative and being able to change and move with the time. You know, we're asking young people, what do they actually need to know? And, and, how do, and, and in what way do they want to be able to learn it? Nale will talk a little bit more about some of the co-design as well. Okay, so now we move on to the actual modules online. So you can go to www.ashimai.nz and these modules are actually for free. Anyone can register. And currently we have two modules live. That's the I Am Cultural Identity and the Respect for Relationships um, module. So the I am module is all about strengthening self-worth through Pacific cultural identity. It gets young people to be able to explore what Pacific values are and the ones that they relate to. They learn about actually the benefits of being able to walk in multiple worlds. They learn to actually live by their values more and learning using values to actually problem solve. Um, and then they have a cultural kind of um, I am identity plan that where you put your cultural values into action. And then we have the respectful partner relationships that's also live. And that's all about how, you know, learning about how to, what makes up, sorry, a healthy partner relationship. And what we've done in this module is we've likened, is that we've related it to actually Pacific values and how we, um, how we operate in a, in a relationship utilizing those, living by those Pacific values. Well, we know that some of the research shows that, you know, what we need to do is that you know, when you ask specific people what is, you know, what, what is one of their most important values, what often comes up is respect, and in particular, respect for elders, respect for their siblings, brothers, respect for their sisters. So what we're trying to do is actually get that respect more generally, for it to be more generally applied, and in particular, into intimate partner relationships. We also teach young people about what um, constitutes an unhealthy and abusive relationship. And we give them some skills to improve their talking and listening skills with links out as well for further information. So all of these online um, learning modules as well will actually be workshops. So we do the online learning modules in the workshops 
And we do that through um, actually expanding some of this content and going more deeper. Okay, and now I'm going to hand over to the lovely Marifora. Thank you so much, Dr. Elizabeth Martin. <laughs> Um, so, in case you've forgotten, my name is Ayolo Poteate Tuunga Mta Afa Komiti, and my part of this presentation is to look at the cultural competency engaging Pacifico. So, with Atumai, as mentioned by our lovely senior manager, we look at prevention, but then also with Atumai, we want to look at the aftercare so that we can effectively look after our communities. So the idea is to deliver a cultural competency program to services that specialize in supporting victim or survivors of violence and sexual violence. The hope is that through Atumai, once we have motivated our Tangatapa speaker, our Tukulanga, our youth, to access these services, these services will then take care of them and look after them well. We are aware that the people who work in these services will most likely be non-Pacifica, so we want to help them take care of Tangata Pacifica. Mm -hmm. So our cultural competency program, we have two parts. Uh, we have part one, which is called Engaging Pacifica, which is what I'm going to talk about in this um, section. And then we have part two, which we are currently um, drafting up. So part one of our cultural competency program is called Engaging Pacifica. And this is actually a Levar's cultural competency program. And we are using this as our foundational program because we think that it fits well with us. So in part one, we look at uh, Levar. These are the four key things that we look at in our Engaging Pacifica part one cultural competency program. We look at Levar. Engaging Pacifica, we look at Pacifica culture and values, and then we look at some case studies to really back up what we talk about in our program. All right, technical difficulties, <laughs> just changing the slide. So the need, why is there a need for cultural competency programs? There is a definite need for cultural competency program. Uh, Pacifica people are featured, as mentioned by Dr. Elizabeth, they are featured disproportionately in violence and sexual violence statistics, more so than the general population. And what's more about Pacifica is that there are a low numbers of Pacifica accessing these services. And you might want to ask, why are there low numbers? Uh, one of the major reasons for this is cultural reasons. Uh, for example, as mentioned before, the shame, the shame or whakama is one of the biggest reasons why our Pacifica youth and people don't access these services. Uh, Pacifica victims would most likely not access formal support services, but they would prefer accessing informal support services such as family, uh, friends and church minister. So it's that cultural shame. And not only that, but it's the Pacifica traditional and cultural system based on the notion of community, where the community overrides your own individual needs. So this is just some examples. So um, if something happens to a Pacifica person, they look at their family and the shame that it will bring on their family and so they would tend to be more silent about their own needs. They wouldn't access any services because of this. They look at their family and they think, oh, okay, my family is going to be looked at in a really bad way by our community if I come out with this, so I will not say anything and I will be silent. And so this is the reason why there is a huge need for cultural competency programs because culturally competent practitioners can increase engagement, treatment retention, and effectiveness. And also there are some uh, legislation uh, drivers, such as the Health Practitioners Competency and Assurance Act 2003. So there is a need for cultural competency programs, and we try to address this through our part one and part two of 
，他说他不知道。<笑> so in our program, if you are to come into our program, it's giving you a specific lens and worldview of how they see the world and why they act the way that they do. So、uh, Pacifica, just a, a quick snapshot of Pacifica and Aotearoa in two thousand and thirteen census, two hundred ninety-five thousand identified as Pacifica people, which is seven percent of the total population. That is a huge percent. And if we break that down some more, the seven major groups of Pacifica in New Zealand are Samoa, Cook Island Maori, Tongan, Nguyen, Fijian, Tokelauan, and Tuvalu. One of the foundations of our cultural competency program that we share with our、uh, the people who come through is this notion of leva. So leva, translated literally to English, means the space. And that naturally there is a space between everything. There's a space between people. There is a space between things, environments, and even spirituality. Well, what makes this space really special in the Pacifica is that it's not a space that is void or empty. This is the space that connects or relates you with your surroundings, and this is the same thing in between people, environment, and spirituality. So, when you come into our cultural competency program, we want to share what to expect in that first point of contact. When you first come in that bar in that space, what to expect, and so how to tausi or tauhiva look after the space, because how well you look after the space is how well、um, the outcomes will be, and so that's why、um, this program is really important because、um, the bar is actually not just in Samoa, it's Pan Pacific, so it's understood,、uh, understood across the Pacific. And so, once you understand the why and how you engage and look after the space or relationship, is how well everything else. And so, also in our cultural competency program, we look at the Pacifica values that are shared across the Pacifica. We have values that are shared across, but then we are also mindful that each Pacifica nation has their own distinct language. Culture and way of doing things. So one of the、uh, Pacifica values shared across that we look at in our program as well are things like respect.、Um, as mentioned by my colleagues in the beginning, each one of us talked about one of our values, and so the other values that we would look at is、uh, respect, family, spirituality, service, honesty, humility, collective, and love. And so, after we have a look at the Pacific worldview and their lens of how and why they act the way that they do,、uh, we look at some case studies of this first point of contact. It's really important the bar, the relationship in between、um, people. And so. This brings us. That is cultural competency part one. It's providing the foundations of how to engage in this bar, in this space,、um, in this relationship, and then cultural competency two point zero is we are giving you the question of what would you like to know? What would you like to know about engaging、uh, with Pacifica? Is there anything else that you would like to know that is not covered in part one? And so,、uh, with, is there anything else? Yeah, and I just wanted to mention so that we have been, as we're rolling out our one point zero called one point zero cultural competency, we have been asking participants as well. You know what they would like to know. We are people that we are providing this stuff to. It, it does range. So some of the people are actually front line in the workforce. Workforce. Our most recent workshop was actually with rape prevention. So we do know that is actually.、Um, There may be a lot of different things that that people want to know as well. So we're currently developing 2.0 with、um, experts in the field as well. But we are asking non-Pacifica. Actually, what what would you like to know? What would help you with the work that you do with Pacifica? Because as we know, a lot of、um, not a lot of Pacifica are being seen to by non-Pacifica, which we are very grateful for, and we want to be able to support them to do the work with Pacifica people. Thanks. 
Mano, hey. thank you, Liz. Thank you for it. And I'd just like to acknowledge you who are still continuing on with us, Mano Alpito. Um, so yes, to reiterate, if you are interested in our cultural competency engaging Pacifica, please keep a tab open on all of our Facebook and website page where we routinely update information on our workshops as well as registration. So Mano Lele, welcome. Uh, my name is Male and my part of the session, I've never seen anyone snooze because who wouldn't be extremely <laughs> excited about data research and evaluation. And so um, beyond the integral record, reporting requirements um, of indicating optimized effectiveness, optimized outcomes, optimized impact, um, which all flow into the performance story, our research and evaluation framework needed to make space alongside this performance story, um, our Pacific story, and that flows uh, into one another. <clears throat> and uh, what I mean by this is, for example, our intergenerational communication, a module which we're currently developing. Uh, during the content design, there will be evidence base, uh, evidence building, literature review, um, environmental scope, and um, as I sat behind the grand multi-database engines of PsycInfo and Scopus and Google Scholar, what typically happened was I'd, um, for the topic area, intergenerational communication, I'd enter into, into the engine, <clears throat> intergenerational communication, experiences by Pacifica and all the related synonyms. And although there were hits, they were also yielded, there were also significant portraits in the literature. So what I did predominantly get back was intergenerational communication, generically, general, including Pacific, within the workplace setting. So intergenerational communication in the workplace setting. And while this was insightful in um, allowing us to access insights into different models and frameworks, dynamics, how baby boomers prefer this modality over this, or millennials, Gen X, Gen Y, the content was not specific enough to be relevant, relatable, and therefore impact meaningful change for all Pacifica communities. And so in light of this dilemma, um, we knew that anecdotally, Pacifica communities, they can feel this positive. They understand intergenerational communication skills. Um, they have in-depth knowledge. They've built the skills. They know the workaround and are maestro. they have maestro mastery over intergenerational communication and they know these things because they've been doing IC since they dot. and so um, that's probably the thing that I love about my research and evaluation role the most is that our R2 my evaluation and research frameworks have made space for um, the oratory of our community's narrative and stories and so here at the Harakeke House um, through Fonon focus groups or Dalano interviews, our community um, would come through, would break bread, and through the inflows and outflows of conversations, it was there that the specific content, um, idiosyncrasies and the nuances, just the gems and the powerful tools would begin to emerge that were both relevant and relatable to our Pacifica cultures and values. And we know that traditionally, um, Pan-Pacific, our culture's longevity as well as transferred knowledge and um, liberation comes through the oratory, it comes through the storytelling. And um, it's been an honor to be able to sit there and listen to them express their experiences and be experts of their own experience. And so it really was the merge of the two, where we got the evidence base, reviewed the literature, um, and then alongside this began to fill in the spaces with the Pacifica narratives. And so a key learning for me was, um, and our team, <clears throat> when you're wanting authentic knowledge, you need authentic engagement. And why would you not um, explore and access and engage with the primary source? Why wouldn't you engage the EMIC inside a perspective, which is our Pacifica communities? And our chief executive says something to our team all the time, and it really did resonate with the engagement, and that is we can only move at the speed of trust. And this was very true when listening to the narratives because the depth that we stepped into was much more than just establishing rapport. Um, it did require a deeper trust. And by being trusted, um, our team, firstly, well, a key principle was that we honour that trust. Um, 
in all our processes. And secondly, they are to my serve our communities and their narratives by weaving together programs and services that were relatable, that were relevant, and that would positively impact the space in which they occupy. Um, so I'll just go through the uh, evaluation framework. So we do have mixed methods, qualitative and quantitative, and they really nicely synergistically balance each other out. Uh, Models that I have chosen elements from include the results-based accountability, in particular, who is better off and how are our Pacifica families and communities better off. We then have the Kagala model by um, Konai Helu Thaman, and in particular, it's about it's a Pacific model where you're creating a garland and, and um, it's the whole idea of gifting it back. And so during LUVA, all the information and the evaluation that we do um, begin to yield it is given back to the community and, and by way of um, useful resources, conducive programs and services, and even just letting them know about the finding. Uh, and then we have systems thinking alongside Synergia. And this is the whole idea that um, bird's eye view looking at the system, you see that behind every trend and pattern, there is a structure and a system that supports or backs that. And it's structures and systems that are, that are either deliberatively, deliberately, sorry, sorry, or unintentionally um, set up. And what I love about the systems thinking is that you begin to see that in isolation and silos, very little will be moved or shifted. Um, but in fact, it's in the collaboration and it's in the working together across organisations, across sectors, that we begin to see um, real change. Now to to my sign up page and uh, website artsandmy.co.nz uh, it does require um, your own and so here is where we're able to capture just like the reach and ensure that we get the feedback and, and know who it's by to begin to tailor some of our material uh, so this is the data collection process and um, there's nothing to Marvelous about this is pretty straightforward and we ensure to keep it straightforward and consistent. So setting up the objectives and then alongside the objectives, we have the key metrics and the most reasonable proxies to begin to measure. Um, Co-design has been so much fun. And in fact, uh, during our workshops, this was, these photos are from last week with the University of Otago Pacific um, Students Association. And you get that real-time feedback during the co-design. Like, the amount of time that they've laughed at some of the slang and the phrases that we still think are youth and hip, um, it just really keeps us in check. Uh, then during the e-learning and workshops, we're able to catch the feedback and get the feedback in the back-end system through real-time or near real-time through Google Analytics, but also the platform that we hold. And then post, there are optional survey monkeys. We're hoping to uh, begin to implement push notifications where we can check in three months and six months Say, for example, their cultural legacy statement where youth are able to um, pay it forward. We would love to check in how would they like to be supported in this, in their language or, um, you know, connecting in with other Pacific cultural groups. And then the ongoing focus group in Dalano, which, yeah, that's probably what I love the most. Um, beyond the collation, it's the cleaning, the analysis, and then what are we going to do with this data? Yeah, so I'll talk about that in the next few slides. So um, evaluation, monitoring and reporting allows for so many multifaceted different purposes. But the one that I've really wanted to emphasize and one that um, is an ethos that we cling to and we hope to cling to throughout to my story is that um, we are, we are honoured and we are, we are blessed to be enter into, to enter into the space and hear chapters and chapters of narratives from the people of the migration, the children of the migration, even their children intergenerationally being able to hear what it's like on the daily or throughout the decades. I think um, that's it's an honour and we have such a responsibility to be able to tell their story and represent our communities and be able to give it back. So I'm going to go through a bit of our reach. Since last year, uh, mid last year actually, uh, we've had 750 face-to-face -face contacts. The I am 
uh, module, Strengthening Self-Worth for Cultural Identity, as well as our Respectful Relationships module. We've had, we've surpassed actually today the 2,000 registrations, and we've had over 40,000 people access our R2Pi platform. Uh, key learning is collaboration is key. And again, with the system thinking, without the interactions and the collaborations with the other organizations, uh, reach is going to just steadily decline. Um, and we're wanting to engage our Pacific youth. They're amazing. And so there are ample initiatives and campaigns that we have collaborated with. Um, for example, uh, Polyfest, secondary schools, different youth groups, church youth groups and sports clubs. And also upon request, word of mouth and social media. Uh, I won't get into this too much, but these are some of the qualitative feedback that we get back. I'll probably just read the first one. I love this module, referring to I am, and I understand why the cultural legacy statement is so important. Cultural legacy statement is what you work up through the I am um, module. You come away feeling empowered and proud to be Pacifica, which is awesome. Keep up the great work. And then just to summarize with our key learnings, the paucity in literature, don't fret. Um, what we've found has been very beneficial to kind of fill this is co-design, fono, talking, balanoa, listening. Um, also the ongoing interaction with youth groups to aid our learning, to hear their narratives and access insider perspectives and to capture their story and transition this into meaningful um, differences. And one example for this is um, on our relationship spectrum, module, um, what's typically still categorized as healthy is the situation of you get into an argument with a partner and they physically stand at the door and intimidate you and wait you pass by. And a lot of the Pacific during youth that we had in our co-design would say that that was, you know, healthy, no sweat. And um, so we been, we delved a little deeper and these were their, their justifications. It was well, they know that if I get out and I drive, that's actually more dangerous to me. That will cause more harm. Or uh, he likes to process things then and there. He just wants to ensure that we leave on good terms. So it's really, those are the gems. And, and uh, again, report, uh, we'll do but it is that deeper trust. That's the of trust. Um, clear objectives to determine tricks, allow space for the narrative to be continued to be told. Ongoing co-design and quality assurance and then keep processes clear and consistent. Thank you, Nale. I love data. I don't know about you guys, but um, I think it's always important to make sure you have a really good um, evaluation system in place and um, proper measures a, um, to make sure that we actually are making a difference for our communities. We have spent a lot of time um, developing this program and we want to make sure that it, it is making a meaningful difference. So that does take us to the end of our of our presentation to you. So um, lover, thank you very much from all of us. And I think now um, we are going to potentially look at some questions. Um, Miriam, I might get you. Okay. Well done. What an amazing presentation. I uh, I was frantically scribbling down so many notes of um, yeah. golden gems that I learned from you. Um, and in particular, I really wanted to um, echo what you already said is that you punch above your weight, and I think you really have. The What you've presented, the way that Ashumai has been developed, um, in particular, it's commitment to your communities and to the young people in your communities and to hear their voices and mm. the respect and um, the, the kind of tension and really actually role modelling that what you're talking about in terms of Levar, that sacred space between you and those in the community really came through and in, in both how you're thinking about the programme and designing it. So um, I, I learnt so much and I'm really appreciative of all the amazing work. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. A few questions coming through. Um, and the first one was very early on in your piece, and someone asked, what are the causative <clears throat> what are the some of the causatives that put Pacifica young people at twice the risk of experiencing sexual violence? If you could kind of go a little bit more in depth with that. Wow. That's a really good question, eh? And we know when we um think about causatives, um 
I'm guessing that we're talking about risk and, and protective factors, right? And 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 we did talk about um, the research not really um, showing or singling out Pacifica people and looking at their risk and protective factors in general. So what we did was go out into the community. And while we looked through the research, actually went out into the community and, and asked people that were working with Pacifica young people. So a lot of our stuff is anecdotal. Um, we do stand by it and we think this program, by addressing some of those, will actually will actually show um, the validity of some of those things. So things, I think, like if you think about um, risk and prof- risk factors in general for um, sexual violence. I think Pacifica people do tend to have um, higher rates of the general risk factors anyway. For example, poverty, you know, um, would, would be a big one. We, we do experience higher rates of poverty. So I think not only do we experience higher rates of the general kind of mainstream risk factors, we do also have probably some unique ones um, of our own. <clears throat> and some of those risk factors too, I think um, we experience them more intensely or they have a bigger impact. So we talked about, you know, the culture of shame and the culture of silence. I think for Pacifica, we experience that and that has, has potentially a greater impact on us, especially the culture of um, <clears throat> the silence. Um, I think it was the ombudsman for Samoa just recently in the last couple of years, went over to Samoa and looked at the sexual violence rates, for example, in Samoa. Um, and it, they were high. They were much higher than New Zealand, extremely high. And this culture of silence um, in Pacifica, I think, has in some ways perpetuated sexual violence um, and has allowed it to continue. There hasn't been enough um, consequence for it. But then also, I think the um, if we look at um, yeah, cultural distortions, um, and you, um, we know um, people always ask about gender roles in Pacific, and we know that gender roles have a, um, strong gender roles are a risk factor for sexual violence. In Pacifica, we do have quite strong Pacifica gender roles. And while I don't, I'll be honest, I don't necessarily agree that Pacifica gender roles in general lead to violence, I think it's a distortion of those gender roles because actually the, yeah, the abuse of power we know that in any system, right, with, with power, there comes corruption. And, and sometimes um, within the Pacifica culture, I think there has been that element of corruption and the distortion of cultural values and the distortion of gender roles. Because yeah. males were always the protector of the family and the nurturer of um, not just your partner, but of, your, of, of the woman, siblings, of the elderly. But, but it's been distorted now where they kind of um, respect has become one one-sided when it was always supposed to be given and received but most importantly given we know respect um, and I talk about this a lot because the idea of respect combined with humility respect was always to be given to someone else but what it's turned into it's been used as a justification they didn't respect me or you know it is my right um <clears throat> sorry I am waffling a bit do you guys want to add anything to that well, I think you uh, summarized it so in terms of the causatives I think short answer we do have higher rates of the mainstream ones and we have some unique ones as well um, being kind of um, <clears throat> the culture of silence potentially the distortion of cultural values and gender roles Great, thank you and I think that's really yeah. important um, in terms of different the different cultural domains of gender and really yeah. the kind of bear that, um, consider that in terms of any approach that we, in terms of prevention that we want to take, that we do need yes. to understand what, what does that mean for the cultural group that we're, that is trying to prevent sexual violence and, yeah. and, and not make those assumptions that if they're rigid, is that always a risk factor and what are protective elements yes. in that? I think that's a really valid um, reflection point for all of us. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so I think we've got a few more questions to get through. Um, yeah. <laughs> is how come e-learning and online modules for young people and did the young people kind of request them? How did that come about? I don't want to just answer all of them. Do you want to? Um, we just know of, of diverse ranges of modalities we can access more Pacifica youth. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes when things are created and then delivered, you'll find that like a common trend or prevailing trend is that Pacifica youth aren't using that. 
Mm-hmm. And so in our co-design, there was a lot of discussions around some of the things that are and even some shame about not knowing much about their culture. These were things that they wanted to do in their own time, in their own space. And so some of our modalities are paired where we do have the e-learning and workshop, um, but it is upon request. And it was during the co-design where we sat down with the Pacifica Youth and with their um, digital savviness and digital competency, we figured why not also make it available because that's a world that they exist in as well. Yeah, I just wanted to add to it. So it's definitely about scalability, but we know young people are actually preferring online now. And if you think about access to services, and one of the reasons being the shame, that actually being able to access this information in your own time, um, privately and confidentially, like actually we wanted to really get the information out to as many people as possible and for no one to kind of not be able to access it. Um, and a lot of good feedback hey, that I think Nale has um, mentioned in one of the slides. Great, thank you. Um, the next question is more around cultural competency. And um, the person asked, as a sexual violence service in Christchurch, specialising in working with kids and youth with no local Pacifica sexual violence service, how best do they go about seeking guidance in terms of their clinical work when working with um, children and their ainga and families around sexual violence? Mm. Do you have anything similar to the motto of Yeah. <coughs> I mean, we would always recommend <coughs> accessing cultural advising. But um, I just want to say that it is it is a field where there are not many Pacifica um, people who hold both cultural and a clinical knowledge. And we have found that even in developing our cultural competency 2.0, that um, the experts in the field, there's, only, there's very few of them, so I know that they are quite um, rare. So I'm not surprised that in Christchurch you're finding it hard to find people. I think, um, you know, LeVar has a lot of resources online um, to go to LeVar. You know, we've got a lot of, um, not just our Atu Mai modules, but there's a lot of stuff online in our resource bank if you're wanting to learn about um, Pacific culture. Um, but for a more of a, like a supervisory thing, I would um, suggest seeking out some sort of cultural supervision. And I'm guessing Pacifica, yeah. they'll sometimes yeah. go through the region. Yeah. So, and especially within um, your local area, there will be um, people that you can um, go to to consult with. And also with our EP, uh, we travel as well. So if you are wanting to have um, that type of um, consultation and help, you could um, go through our, our webpage and we have the list of dates there or you could just email through and we'll be yeah. happy to help you. Yeah, so please don't feel alone. We are here to help. Remember, it's a collaboration. Yes. So everyone is here to help uh, look after and serve our communities. Yes, good point. Please um, give us an email at atumai.levar.nz and we could actually, you know, maybe come down to Christchurch yeah. and do a cultural competency module. We are currently looking at our work plan for the next part of the year and booking in workshops. So if there's a big enough group, we could also come down and do a um, cultural competency workshop. And I think this will be great as well for our point two, uh, 2.0 as well. Yeah. So uh, we could talk with you about um, do our point one, 1. 1.0, and then talk some more about what more would you need from us. Oh, and yeah, then we, could, we could help you some more. Okay. And that brings me to a great plug in terms of the evaluation form. I've shared it already in the chat once, but I'll share it again because that does actually specifically ask the question um, that the ASUMI team wanted in our evaluation form. So you can directly um, either send them an email directly or put it in the evaluation form. What do you want to know in a cultural competency 2.0 type training? Um, What were the things that you as practitioners out there are seeking to learn? So... Just put that in the chat room right now. Thank um, you. Okay. Thank you. And the next question is quite similar, but not from a clinical perspective, but from a prevention perspective. How can how can we as sexual violence primary prevention providers partner with LeVar? Similar thing of emailing you and connecting yes. with you and can seeing where that us? goes. Yeah. Mm. Please email us and you know, and we can arrange a time to um, to meet up, catch up, and talk about. Um, how we can support each other, and most importantly, how LeVar can support. A big part of the Atu Mai um, program is, is about system change. Um, so we are wanting to support people out there. 
And and I love that you're talking about systems change. I, it's been um, a passion of mine over the last couple of years of really delving in. And I was um, yeah. hearing you before going, yes, when you have that bird's eye view, you can really start exploring how the system informs and reinforces or where the catalyst of change is. So that's been really exciting part of listening to this presentation of how robust yeah. and broad um, it all was. The whole strategy is in, in this prevention um, this pre prevention initiative. Um, the last question is, um, is pornography consumption something that's been a factor, particularly thinking of young people abusing other young people, which you've, which we've seen a reported rise in? So have you, in your experience of co-design and working with the young people, um, had many conversations about pornography and its impact? So um, so we haven't taken that into co-design yet, but it was one of the 10 prioritised risk factors that we're looking at addressing. Um, so definitely, we ha we do, um, we've done some work with um, NetSafe as well. We know that Pacifica Young People, we access, I think we have a, we, we access online, um, we use online the most, but we're the least safe. Online um, competency, digital competency, the lowest yeah. levels of online health and safety, yeah. which is really, it's, that's quite worrying. Yeah. yeah. So it's definitely in our work plan and it's definitely something that we um, hope to produce um, some resources on, potentially even workshop it and do some co-design. So it's there. Um, um, we've been thinking about it and it has been included in some of our research, but we're yet to produce any content yet. So definitely. Yeah. But we have started creating relationships with people like Netso. That's great to hear that it is your, in your work plan. So just for those in the chat room, if there's any um, last pieces of information you'd like to, um, there's lots of kind of acknowledging all three of you and your amazing presentation coming through. Um, like there's um, also someone saying that's really good to know that you do have pornography in your, um, in your work plan. Other people saying that they'll definitely be in touch. So, yeah, lots of awesome. in the chat room. If there are no last questions coming in through the group, um, we can start wrapping this up. And yeah. is there any way you would like to close today's session as mm. we open with a prayer? Did you want to close? Yeah. With a yeah, we will close with a prayer. But before that, we just want to thank you again thank so you, much, Miriam, Miriam for, for providing us this opportunity. We do want to get Atumai out um, to as many people as possible, and we want to be as supportive as possible. And thank you all to everyone that, ha that has watched us. This has been a, <clears throat> this is all our first experience of a webinar. So it has been a new experience, a, a good one though. So um, we really enjoyed it. And I'll hand it over to Bora who will, who will, who will close for us. Thank you. Mato Tano, Yelofa, Fatman, we are in Lafa now, Patasimai, the Fufuanga lot to him, Olenea, so I was of the Ima Olena, and it's Tano, a lot to Swafa Yesu, Amen. Thank you. Hello, thank you so much. Bye. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.